Thank you. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman Jones, who will present a resolution recognizing Ron Wilch. Would Mr. Wilch and those accompanying him please join the councilman at the podium? Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Welch, a proud resident of the 8th Councilmatic District, once said that the suit won't make the man, but the suit will make the interview. <laughs> said dress for the job you want, not the job you have, and taught a lot of people in this room that, you know, want to claim it, how to build a wardrobe. And for a lot of people who came from inner cities where that wasn't the norm, he said, and I'm, I'll do it in my Ron Welch voice, first you must have your blue suit. It must be red, <laughs> white, and blue. White shirt, striped tie, and blue suit. And then you build your browns, and then you build your stripes, and then you build your wardrobe. And for me, uh, some <coughs> years ago, uh, that was a very important lesson because I, came, I was a poor boy from West Philly and we didn't talk about those things. But uh, Mr. Welch and his lovely family and particularly his wife Julie took that concept around the world as an ambassador for the city of Philadelphia and the fashion industry. Uh, he went and traveled the worldwide from China to Chinatown, from the far east to the far northeast, where he taught in prisons. Um, he taught not only the art of tailoring, but the art of fashion, and took it to a new height all the way up to Madison Avenue from Philadelphia prisons. From fashion montage, which was always in Germantown, uh, to boys to bosses. And just a second to talk about that, how that building of a wardrobe for a young person on their first interview was critical. You only have one chance to make a first impression. And if you choose to make that impression, making a statement and having clothing that is unacceptable, then that is a conscious decision, but to make sure that it wasn't an unconscious decision. And that is what I've always loved about them. And as you can see behind me, all of the people, well-dressed people, uh, here, always follow Julie's and uh, Ron Welch, the fashion czar's advice. So I'm here recognizing and honoring Ron Welch and his family who have risen to become the biggest forces in Philadelphia fashion industry. Whereas Philadelphia has long been a leader in design and manufacturing of textiles and wearing apparel with many notable Philadelphia designers making significant contributions to this industry for the past 20 years in Philadelphia. He has been the host of many notable fashion events, including Paris and Philadelphia, all right, uh, Fashion Montage, Philly Fashion Expo, and Fashion is an Art. And I'll also mention a less famous member of his family named Eve, right? Because you all the first, right? Whereas? And whereas Ron Wilch of the 8th Council District has become one of the biggest forces in the Philadelphia fashion industry. He has been designing and involved in the fashion industry for over 35 years 
And whereas, in addition to creating designs for his own clothing line, Ron Wilch Collection, he operates his business, the Wardrobe Clinic, located at 1500 Walnut Street in the heart of Center City. A few notable celebrities in his client list include Eddie Murphy, Will Smith, and Katy Perry. And whereas not only is Ron Welch a fashion icon, his wife Julie, his right arm, Julie Welch is a well-known fashion show producer and has served as the backstage manager for Philly Fashion Week for the past 10 years. I might add she's a fabulous model on the runway too. Her daughter, Grammy award-winning music artist Eve, is admired for her profound sense of style and was the creator and driving force behind the fetish brand. Mr. Welch's son, Farad, is that correct? Yes, Farad. Farad Welch is also making a mark on the fashion industry through his private label fashion brand, Motion, businessman, making the Welch family leaders in the Philadelphia fashion industry. And? Whereas in 2017, Philadelphia Magazine acknowledged Ron Welch's outstanding work in fashion at the Wardrobe Clinic, declaring him a best tailor in their annual Best of Philly issue, and whereas Mr. Welch routinely gives back to his fashion roots by hosting a fashion networking event, Fashion Night Out, which gives an opportunity for both established and emerging designers to showcase and market their brands on a larger platform. As a result of this increased exposure, employment in the manufacturing industry in Philadelphia is on the rise. Now, therefore, be it. Resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that it hereby recognize and honors Ron Wilsch and his family as the first fashion family of Philadelphia for all they do to encourage the growth of Philadelphia's fashion industry. Further resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to Ron Wilch as evidence of the sincere admiration and respect of this legislative body. Congratulations. Right. And the chair recognizes Mr. Wilch for remarks. Come. I want to thank you, thank the council, thank you, council president, thank oh. you, Councilman Jones and Sidney Bass and all. Listen, this is such an honor. I'm very emotional right now. So I want to say this. I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. I had opportunity to leave Philadelphia many times, Chicago, St. Louis. But I stayed. When Wilson Good was the mayor and Philadelphia Dresses the World was building, I was a part of that first time in 1987. That year I met my wife. I won the award for excellence. That year later, in 92, we did Paris and Philadelphia at the Academy of Music. First show for myself and the first show for her to produce. 300 people showed up. Sold out crowd. I was honored. We had other designers. We never charge designers. We always promote designers. We always promoted the industry. Because I know I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. I worked in Bakley 500, Fishman and Tobins, Sidecheck and Sons, these vacant factory buildings. I lost jobs from job to job. I, f I know how I feel to get laid off doing piecework, bundle boy. But my skill in tailoring, I want to thank my teacher who passed away, Christopher Ramsey, from Thomas A. Edison High School. My pattern and design teacher, Michael Pedalino, who passed away, he taught me pattern making. For those two men gave me the skill to dress some famous people. I'm called constantly to LA and other places to do things. But now, I want to take it further. I'm 58 years old. And what I have learned, I must pass on. So we did a deal a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago. Can I say this, Councilman? Let them know. We just did a deal. I have dedicated from this day forward to invest my time and money and equipment into public schools. We're going to do. Yeah. 
just did a deal with Overbrook. Overbrook, we're going to start a summer camp in May, free of charge to the scared kids. But the neighborhood adults is allowed to come and learn the basic, basic sewing, how to put on buttons. You'd be surprised that people can't sew on a button today. And it's a shame. So what I have learned in my 36 years in the industry is to give it back to young people because our young people are the driving force in the fashion industry. We must put the trades back in high school. Yeah. I know corporate sponsors want to give money, but they don't have the opportunity. They don't know how. So I'm going after corporate dollars. I'm going after the bailout banks who got the bailout money in 2008. I'm going after corporations who have big box stores in our neighborhood and give nothing back. I am determined to create jobs. I am determined to leave something behind. I am determined to leave a legacy. So, I promised my mother in 19... 79, when I told her, I said, Mom, I like this tailoring thing in high school. Because my brother here, Sherman, Wiltshire, Sherman, this was my example of how to dress. Yes, sir. <laughs> my father was coming and going, but he was my example how to dress. My big brother, he had the perfect closet, sweater was perfectly neat, shoes with shoe, he had shoe trees in his shoes. Tailored suits, silken wool slacks. And I asked my mom, I said, Mom, I want to wear what Sherman has. And he said, Mom, Ronald can't wear this because this is tailor made. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Why are it's tailor meaning, meaning that it's made just for your specification, your size, your measurements? At that time, I was taller than him. That, that means I was too tall for his pants. But I promised my mother when I was in high school, I said, Mom, if you buy me a sewing machine, you wouldn't have to buy me no clothes. Hello. And, nine, and a week later, in 79, she took me to 12 and Cherry, Arrow sewing machine, a black singer, I still have it. And from that day forward, I never looked back. So, I like what I do, I like to look sharp, I like to teach fashion, but now I'm on another level. I'm going to teach product designing, product development, product packaging, yes. marketing. I've known in 50 states and four countries. I got friends around the world. So, young people. Is my mission. Speak about the young people. Yeah. They want to be trained, they want a job, but I'm going to teach them self employment. Because I know in politics it's hard to create jobs out of thin air, right? You got to have budgets, you got to have, this, you got to set law. But if I could teach you how to pin up a suit, how to take a measurements, how you could show a person fabric and show them how to style and dress, you become a self employed mm. worker instantly. I know Macy's and department stores looking for fitters and stylists. Because most people in those department stores, they, they don't know how to fit you up. They don't know how to pay you up. They don't know how to take your measurements. But imagine young, young kids coming out of high school can measure you up, come in your office, pin up your suit, mark you for your alterations, bag it up, bring it to the factory, bring it to the Overbrook, do the alteration and deliver it back to you in a quality package at a reasonable price. And it's for a good cause. They're not stealing, they're not robbing. They're looking sharp with their pants pulled up. We got set examples. My wife and I, we, we, we produce shows. We're going to do fundraising for events, for good causes. We're going to raise money. I'm going to reach out to Hollywood. I'm going to reach out to Eddie Murphy. I'm reaching out to Will Smith. I'm going to reach out to everybody I know. Put money back. Put your name, put your brand. Let us develop something for you with our kids designing it. 
I want young kids in high school designing new uniforms for the police department. We need new uniforms for the correctional officers. We need uniforms for charter schools and public schools. They should not be wearing the same old uniform that's made in China. China don't pay no taxes here. China don't pay no taxes here. Every uniform that the public and taxpayer spend on police uniforms, correctional uniforms, sheriff uniforms, school uniforms should be made in Philadelphia. If we have contracts, if we have contracts in Philadelphia making uniforms for police officers and prisons, that's creating jobs overnight. What we got to do is get a vacant building and some machines. Look, I used to train blind people over in Jersey, best work industry for the blind. I trained blind people for three years, totally blind. I taught them how to use an industrial machine, how to sew straight, how to make a product. Now they're in, they in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, sewing for the government. They make a uniform, military uniform right now. I had trained over 30 blind people. I trained people in the prisons for 10 years, for Philicor. I trained at Philadelphia University, I taught. I taught at Dobbins High School. I asked the question to myself, who am I? Who am I? What's my mission? My mission is to train and teach and put people to work and make jobs for ourselves. Jobs, no crime. Jobs, no crime. Because you'd be too tired to do any crime. You got to go to work tomorrow. So I want to thank you. My wife, thank you. Listen, I am so honored to have a wife like this woman, Julie Welch, who has been my right arm and my left leg, almost. <laughs> and she helped me produce the product. I had the idea. She put it in a plan of action. She is the push button to make things go. And I thank God for my wife, my son, who just came from Atlanta. He's now in Atlanta, but he's a designer, very fashionable young man. I never forced him to wear a suit, let him be himself. And of course, my daughter Eve, she'll be in tomorrow. She's been honored. But she can't make it. She thank you for honoring us. She be here tomorrow. And listen, all we are is Philadelphians trying to leave something behind for the next generation. For the next generation. And at my father's funeral, a year ago at my father's funeral, I said my father left a footprint. My job is to make the footprint even bigger. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your honor. Thank you, Councilman. You look sharp, brother. <laughs> Clean Councilman. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Council, please.